Now he's old, and he's no bad. He's no match for Ravana, but he just he was thinking, I must do something to try to save her. And uh, so he came and he attacked Ravana in such a fierce way, using his wings, and he uh, he actually knocked the horses from the chariot out. And char the chariot started to spin in the air. Ravana managed to somehow get control. And then he was beating Ravana with his wings and tearing him apart with his beak. And then it's a wonderful fight. And uh, Vitaya was old and Ra Ravana was really powerful and he had so many weapons at his available. So there was no match. But because he was fighting out of righteousness, he had such power. The, the power of righteousness was behind him and he was fighting and Ravana couldn't defeat him. It was amazing that this old bird who was no match for Ravana was actually defeating Ravana. And, and, but not that Ravana was defeated, but the Ravana was trying at the same time to keep Sita in the chariot and at the same time fight with, uh, with Chitayu. So it was a interesting scene. You can imagine what, it, what the scene looked like. This big gigantic bird beating on Ravana at the same time Ravana is trying to fight him and hold Sita at the same time. So in Kambi's Naraya, uh, Ramayan, Kambi's Ramayan, it, there is a place where Ravana realizes, I can't defeat him. And he can't defeat me and this battle is just gonna go on. So Ravana uses his intelligence. He says to Jatayu, Jatayu, I'll tell you my weak spot and you tell me your weak spot. So this was a trick by Ravana. Jatayu fell for the trick. So Jataya said, all right, tell me your weak spot. He said, my feet. And that wasn't true. He just made it up. And then Jataya was asked by Ravana, Ravana, and he said, my wings. So that was a sign for Ravana. And Ravana took out his sword and, and cut off the wings of Jataya. And because of that, Jataya was no longer able to fight. And he fell into a pool of blood laying there on the verge of death and Ravana flew away with Sita Devi. Of course, when Ram came and he came to the scene, he saw this bird and he was thinking, oh my God, this bird has devoured Sita. And now he, has, now he is dying because of that. So Ram was going to finish him off, but then Jatayu spoke and sp explained, no, my dear Lord, actually, you know, it was Ravana who took Sita away. And uh, he explained everything. And then in the last few moments, he received the, the merciful blessing of, um, of Ram. And he went back home, back to Vaikuntha in the spiritual world. Ram was overwhelmed with love for Jatayu, how he had sacrificed his life in order to try to save Sita Devi. So this is a noble exit of life that he, he left the body in the most righteous and glorious way. And at the same time, he received the full blessings of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that's a beautiful story. If you get a chance, please look for the chance and read that the pastime. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, no one knew where Ravana went. They didn't know where he went. And then, of course, Sita was gone. And then later on, there was a big plan as uh, Ram and Lakshman come in contact with Sugriva and, Hayek and Hanuman. And then he makes alliances with the monkeys. And I'll tell one beautiful story about the killing of Vali, the brother of uh, Sugriva, in another one of our sessions. That's a beautiful pastime. 
it's a pastime where Ram also gets criticized for acting the way he did. But if you understand the pastime in detail, you'll see the love that the Lord act completely righteous. But there, there are places within the Ramayana that the Lord is criticized for the way he acts. And that's one of them, with the killing of Ali. So, right, so I'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions on anything related to Ram Leela. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this very entrancing pastime where we are all watching like a movie, this whole scene of uh, Panchavati forest and Ram and Lakshman chasing after the deer and then Ravan coming in this epic battle between Jatayu and uh, Ravan. Thank you so much. Dear devotees, please uh, unmute yourself if you'd like to ask questions or share realizations. Thank you. Vivek has his hand up. <laughs> Vivek Prabhu, please go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, I like just wanted to share my one realization with the Ramayan, which I, in fact, like there are two which I love the most and uh, give lots of inspiration. One uh, is related to uh, when uh, Hanumanji was making the bridge uh, from the stones with army. And uh, I heard this from one lecture uh, from uh, one another Maharaj, uh, sorry, one another Prabhu. Uh, so he was saying that uh, Ram Chandra, like Ram Chandra, like Lord Ram, he was trying to throw these stones in the ocean and all was sinking in the bottom. And then Hanumanji saw that and he was trying to then uh, like uh, then Ram Chandra, Lord Ram asked that uh, when I'm throwing this, it's just sink, sinking in the bottom while uh, you are throwing all this with name written, uh, like Ram name written on top of every stone. It's very beautifully uh, floating and making this bridge. And uh, Hanumanji explained that uh, it's because if you throw anybody, that person cannot survive, like that cannot, like uh, there is no chance to survive. Uh, and uh, if uh, your name is written, that holy name is equivalent to you, and uh, then there is no way uh, there will be any challenges. And I feel like whenever like do the chanting, I feel like holy name uh, that powerful. It's Lord name, and hopefully like that name will uh, help me in crossing this uh, ocean. Uh, so that's yeah. really really. That's the, that's the meaning that the holy name will get you across the ocean of birth and death and into the spiritual kingdom. And the holy name has nothing to do with anything material. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the more essential parts of the, for us, the glories of the holy name and how it was illustrated in this particular to pastime by Ram and Hanuman just to give that message. Uh, wherever the holy name of Ram is, we can float across this ocean of material existence. <laughs> Thank you. Um, devotees, just continue with your thinking about your questions and I will be right back because I lost my assistant here today and I have to do something in order for me to keep going here. So I'll be back in about two minutes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm.
Hare Krishna, we have returned. Um, so far, we didn't have any questions except one in the chat, Guru Maharaj. That's one, we got one from Suba. Suba, please go ahead. We got one from Bhaktivatsal. We got one from Suba. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, uh, uh, Nanak Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Um, please accept yeah, please. my. Please increase your volume. It's um, so hard to hear. Okay, sorry, Maharaj. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanut Pranam, Maharaj. Please accept my um, respectful obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Uh, Maharaj, um, could you please explain, like, uh, while you were telling the pastime, like, about deer, like, uh, when um Ra lord rama he went to like uh, abduct a uh, deer i mean uh, so why like uh, lakshmana got chastised uh, from sita and rama i mean uh, i was so like uh, serving lord rama and sita uh, but still like uh, um, sita has to say like you know mm, how can uh, how i mean like when uh, lakshmana was hesitating to go uh, to help so Sita Mata said, like, how uh, I know why you didn't want to go because you wanted to stay mm, here with me. So why, I mean, Sita Mata has to say like that. And even Rama, when he came back. And yeah, yeah, she was acting differently. She was acting apparently under Mahamaya, though she is the queen of yoga maya. Uh, so, the fact that she got apparently bewildered and looking towards this deer, the, the uh, commentaries on this part of the pastime kind of illustrates that, you know, one who looks towards something material forgets about their position in relationship to the Supreme Lord. So apparently she got bewildered by some kind of material opulence. You might say this is all Leela <laughs> and all for the pastime to play itself out where, but then again, on another level, it just shows that uh, how we can learn that by doubting the Lord and becoming uh, bewildered by material opulence, we cause trouble for ourselves and others. So that's the message in that particular pastime there. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So Mara, just like um, relating to that pastime, like uh, in general, like uh, in the real life also, sometimes we try to do like help others, but still like, uh, you know, we get that, we don't get that, uh, um, they don't accept that we are trying to do good and they try to actually chastise like uh, in a different way. So how should we handle a situation like that? Yeah, Lakshman had the same problem. He was only doing the best for everyone and still he wasn't appreciated and some and even saw he was even seen as doing the wrong thing. So people will misunderstand. Uh, sometimes you have to help them understand by explaining your intentions. But if they still don't understand, then what can you do? If you're sincerely trying to help someone, <clears throat> then they can't appreciate or, or don't understand what you're doing. <clears throat> Every sometimes it requires some explanation in order to keep the relationship from going to explanation. If that doesn't work, then What can you say? That means that people that people don't are not appreciative of what you're trying to do or trying to help. 
a devotee, even if someone does the wrong thing, but is trying to do the right thing, the devotee will see, oh, this person is trying to do the right thing, although they made mistakes. So they give them credit in that, in that way. Yeah, still, Krishna is the same way. Just like when we execute our devotional service, many times we make mistakes or we're inattentive or whatever, but Krishna will see, oh, they're trying to serve me. Never mind the mistakes. I'm taking the service. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada says that Krishna always sees the service, just like when Putin had came to kill Krishna by offering her breast milk. Krishna didn't, he knew she was a demon and he was, he was going to give her what she deserved. But at the same time, he also glorified her as being his mother because she acted in that role. So she came to actually give service and at the same time, try to fulfill her nefarious, uh, act, uh, nefarious nature by trying to kill him. But Krishna saw the good side. The devotee is like that also, but a non-devotee will not see that, will may not appreciate what you're trying to do, and will find reasons to criticize. So that's the nature of not, people who are non-devotees. Devotees shouldn't be like that. Devotees always take the, the best from every situation. Like I used to to go out on Sankirtan and sometimes I would meet people out there and they would be intoxicated and then I would offer them you know a book or something and they would be appreciating what I'm doing and they would want to reciprocate the appreciation in some way so they would offer me some intoxication as a way to show their appreciation so I would take it and then say, thank you very much. I will, uh, I will use it later on. And then I thank them and leave. And then, of course, I get rid of it. But it wasn't so much the gift. It was the intention. So if your intentions are good or proper, from a devotional point of view, that's what counts. But from a material point of view, it's not seen like that. And in the material way, you have to be correct according to what is correct and what is not correct. In spiritual, you try to be correct, you do your best, but, and Krishna will see that. Krishna is called uh, Baba. Uh, Bhava Hi Janardana. What is that? Bhava Graha Graha Bhava Grahi Janardana. And he takes the best from the situation, just like when we chant Hare Krishna. A lot of times we're, we don't even chant the, the name clearly. But Krishna hears the name. He said, Oh, they're chanting my name. It doesn't matter if they don't say it clearly, but and he's accepting the devotion. So that's Krishna. But materialistic people will not appreciate. And when you do something for them, they expect you to do something again. <laughs> that's the problem. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the detailed answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I hope it wasn't too detailed. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Bhakti Vatsal, you have a question? Bhakta Vatsal Prabhu, are you there? You're, you've raised a hand to ask a question. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe he can write it in the chat. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Bhakta Roberto has a question on the chat while we're waiting for Bhakta Vatsal Prabhu. He says, Dear Guru Maharaj and Vaishnavas, please accept my obese, humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. How can we get the story of Sita Devi learning about chastity? Your servant, Bhakta Roberto. <laughs> well, I want to see how many devotees actually want it before I post it. If there is a good number, we'll post it out. I'll post it. If it's just Robert who wants to learn about chastity, I don't think it's enough for me to post. <laughs> it should be a, a group. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we would definitely like to have that, Guru Maharaj. I don't think you would find this very useful for preaching. <laughs> That's my opinion. Prem Kishori, Sri Devi both wanted. Who should I send it to? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Always to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, you can send it to me, Guru Maharaj. Even I want it, Guru Maharaj. You like it too? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I mean, it's such a beautiful part of the Ramayana. You can't believe it. It's just, it's such a rare gem. You won't find it anywhere else. Please share, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, it's very hard. I had to, I, I found the text and the text is written in Sanskrit with all the everything. And I, I went through the whole text taking out all the, the Devanagari and everything else. So it's readable for the devotees. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we have several people, Shamarani, Ladini, Namrata, Vishwapavani, uh, now Lavanya, Sudha Mataji, all of us humbly requesting you to please share it. Okay. Um, Robert inspired all the ladies to come forward. That's good. So Robert did some preaching. Good, very good, Roberto. Yes. Guru Maharaj, Bhakta Vipsal Nitsai has responded to your request to put it in the chat. He says, Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj and Vaishnavas. What to do when the mind starts to criticize? And what is the destination of such an unfortunate soul? Well, make sure you don't go for that destination. You have to stop it. When you start in criticizing, just take the take the, the, the same object that you're criticizing and look for the good qualities. Lord Chaitanya says that anyone who blasphemes my devotees, my holy name will destroy them. And you know, he says, he said, anyone who blasphemes the devotees, they are drinking poison, and therefore my holy name will destroy them. Anyone who praises the devotees, they will drink nectar and they will live eternally in the spiritual realm. So instead of when you when criticism comes, just dismiss it. Just think it's just a it's a uh, it's a feature of a disturbed mind, that's all. And dismiss it and start seeing the good qualities. If you let your mind rule you, it will. You have to rule the mind. The mind can, the mind will control you if you let it, and it, it'll really control you. You have to check the mind by the intelligence and connect the intelligence to the spiritual 
not to spiritual knowledge. Okay, any more questions or comments? Dear yeah, devotees, if you have any realizations about Lord Ram's pastimes or would like to share something or ask further questions, please do go ahead now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Yes, um, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. So I wanted to know about uh, Sita's sister, Urmila. Uh, there is not much elaboration on her in Ramayan, but uh, when, they when uh, Ram, Lakshman, and Sita, they decided to go to, uh, uh, you know, forest, uh, Urmila stayed back without Lakshmana. Mm -hmm. With... uh, your microphone cut off. A fair decision from her. Namrata, we lost you for a little bit. You went offline or we couldn't hear you. Could you just repeat your question, please? When Lakshman went to the forest without Urmila, that's the last thing we heard. Okay, can you hear me properly now? Yeah. Okay, so uh, when all three of them uh, went to forest, uh, why did uh, Urmila choose to stay back? <laughs> there isn't much elaboration on... Uh, you know uh, the topic of Urmila, so I would uh, I would like to know about uh, the character of Urmila. Hmm. Well, I haven't had I don't have much information on that part of the Ramayana. Obviously, there, there was a reason. To speculate would be a good chance to be wrong so i don't want to speculate why she didn't go but uh lakshman's duty was to guard sita and ram and that was a full-time thing for him that's the only thing that comes to my mind why she didn't go i don't know i actually you have to investigate further Okay, thank you, Maharaj. I'll try to do it. Little research too. Thank you, Namrata, for a very nice question. Any other devotees, please, if you have any questions, do go ahead and ask Guru Maharaj. Okay, maybe we can stop here. So tomorrow our class will be at 12.20 uh, UK time. We are with the devotees in Charlotte. So it starts at 12.20 UK time. And then of course, tomorrow evening, Lavanya will post it. There is an interview that I'll be con I'll be I'll be interviewed on a couple of subjects, and that starts at uh, four o'clock UK time, and that's coming from India. The interview, so uh, um, you can find out more information from Lavanya. I think she maybe posted it on the conference. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, I want to say one more thing before I leave. And this is very important for the devotees to listen. Um, maybe perhaps some of you know of it, maybe most of you know of it, but one of the one of our dear 
God Brothers, very senior devotee, lifelong resident of Mayapur Dam, Pankajangri Prabhu, is undergoing great difficulty with uh, the virus. And so now mm, they feel like they cannot do anything more for him in Mayapur. So there is a plan to take him to the hospital in Calcutta. So um, please offer your prayers. And we're requesting devotees to chant extra rounds in order to show our concern for Pankaj Jangri, such a wonderful devotee. Him and his brother Janati Bas both came to Mayapur in 1973. I think he, he came a little after. Uh, Janati Bas was first. Twin brothers. Uh, they came and they have been in Mayapur since 1973, uh, serving Sri Sri Radha Madhava and all the Vaishnavas there and doing wonderful Pajari service. Anka Jangri is the chief Pajari for Lord Nishringadev. So you can also offer your prayers to Lord Nishringadev for his well being. And probably, Prabhupada taught us to pray in a certain way. And that prayer goes, my dear Lord, if you so desire, please cure our dear God, brother, God, uncle, Ankajangri Prabhu. So we leave it in the hands of the Lord, not demanding anything from the Lord, but we show our concern and our uh, request, it's praying for the Lord to cure him if he so desires. The Lord is all powerful. Okay, so that is our prayer, and it's the prayers of the devotees that make the difference in Krishna consciousness. If we have any success in our spiritual life, it's based on our association with the devotees and our service to our spiritual master. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for a beautiful lecture. We look forward to more nectar tomorrow and day after and on and on until Ravnami and even after that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj.